I'm Jeff Mangus, and uh, I've been involved in this kind of stuff and doing this show since uh, 1987. And I've been playing Dungeons & Dragons since 1979. So what this game has done for me and for my life is it's just taken me on a trip that uh, nothing else could come close to. When I first came to this show, Dungeons and Dragons was uh, the one and only, and there was nothing else that could compare to it. And there were a couple of guys working for them that uh, were an elite group. They're probably, I mean, I look at them like they're four pillars of an industry that uh, nobody in this room could be separate from. They've impacted every one of us, whether directly or indirectly, and Almost everything that's come afterwards has been affected by what they did. Now, for me, Keith was the one that was the closest to where I wanted to take my work. And his work spoke to me because of the landscape that he put into his pieces. Um, there's a realistic quality to Keith's landscape. I've often des described my own work as the it's being like I'm a landscape painter that's stuck in a fantasy job. And uh, to me, every bit of Keith's work uh, screamed out as being a real place. And I love the environments that he created. Now, North Watch, which is the name of this piece, was um, really impressive to me because of uh, its use of snow. And, and what you're seeing in here is, is not stuff you can kind of just make up when you're painting snow. That's, he, he looked at, he, he talked about his trees, okay? The guy who was up here before me, Wayne, for, thank you, um, was talking about his trees. And that's another aspect of his work that just makes me crazy. Because uh, you can tell from looking at his trees that not only does he understand the way that they work, but he's out there among them and looking at them all the time. And the snow that he paints is the same way. You can't just kind of brush that off. I mean, a lot of people who would make snow or make sand would, would just do that. But he researched every aspect of everything he did. And you know he was looking at real snow or photographs of real snow when he, when he did that. And a painting teacher once told me that the best fantasy is rooted in reality. And I think that that makes so much of what he did that much more convincing. I just, I would get lost in his details and in in the scales that he put on every dragon he did. Uh, Fire Sea is another one that just knocks my socks off every time I look at it. Any time I was painting anything that had to do with volcanoes or lava, I would always pull that one out of the file and take a look at the way he did that one. But I love the solitary elements in here. A lot of my paintings have a kind of quiet to them that a lot of fantasy art doesn't generally carry. You know, it's usually about the battles and the conflict and, and all that. But this piece has none of that. And as an artist who's been in the business for almost 20 years, I don't buy a lot of prints. Um, I like to swap them with other artists. I think that's really cool, but my house is full of paintings. I, I, I have no room for prints. But the print of that piece, the North Watch piece, was probably the last print that I paid for. And it was uh, just one that I really had to have a copy of. Uh, the Draconians, um, I know a lot of you are familiar with this. It's kind of, again, it's the snow and the trees, and it just sucked me right in. The figures in the background, there's a little group of figures going on up here. Um, I would just, you could study his pieces and get lost in them again and again. Thanks. Okay. And, and this particular little print came off of a long strip. Um, now, I didn't know Keith real well, but in every year that I came to this show, we had a little bit of conversation. And when I thought about it more and more, those little conversations that we would have almost each year um, amounted up to quite an interesting picture of, of the guy. One year that he had, he had printed up this sample. It was a long strip. It was, it was a very unusual piece. It was maybe... Uh, four feet long and six inches high. Had about five samples of his pieces on it. 
the piece that he signed that on is probably about the size of a postcard. But he printed up this strip that he was going to send out to art directors. And I happened to be around when he got the proof sheets from his printer. And I was just curious beyond all belief and like looking over his every shoulder as he reviewed this long strip of paper. And I was like, can I get one of those? <laughs> and uh, he said, sure, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> so he signed that one because of all the ones on the strip, that one was a favorite of mine. But uh, let me go, go to that next one because it's, it's a, a weird and interesting story. It's come up already about the kindness that this guy had towards the industry, and it's it's true. I, I don't know if I've ever met anybody as open and willing to help out an up and coming artist as Keith was. Um, and I would I would say to everybody in this room that it's important to everything we do and everybody who comes after us that we kind of follow that example, because we there's no doubt about that. Uh, there are not any great organizations or, or guilds or um, any kind of uh, thing that we're a part of, except the people in this room. You know, and uh, when a 21-year-old who's fresh out of art school comes to you and asks you for some advice, um, <coughs> you got to pick this kid up and make him think that he can run with the wind. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a point of reality to what we do. And nobody in this room is here for the money. Everybody's in this room because they love what we're working on. And uh, th this whole little thing right here comes from me talking to Keith about oil painting and about mediums. And just like that example we heard before about him writing down numbers and, and flesh tones and all this kind of thing, he wouldn't hold that kind of stuff back. This was his formula that he gave me for uh, what he'd like to use as far as uh, getting an oil paint to, to dry readily, but to not overkill the paint. So he drew out this little diagram for me on this little tiny scrap of envelope or whatever it was. And, uh, and that was my original Keith Parkinson. And I tucked that away in my stuff and held on to it like it was a friggin' prize. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and the fact that I still have it 17 years later is a big testament to what I felt about this guy and his work. Um, so and the other thing about Keith is that I really felt a companionship with him because he treated me as a professional even though I was so far below his league. When I saw him at a convention, whether it be this one or another one, even if he was in a, a circle of friends that I just couldn't get anywhere near, he would always acknowledge me, and, and I just, I can't tell you how much that would pick me up. When, uh, when, and the, and the, I think the biggest thrill I ever had um, in discussions with Keith was a, a thing where he was looking at a painting I did for White Wolf years ago, and it was a snow scene. So we had that in common right away with a lot of dead trees in it. And there's a castle in the distance in this piece. And Keith was studying this painting. And he, he came up and he said, and the castle really fades. It's a lot of aerial perspective on it. It gets real far in the background. And he came to me and he said, how did you get it to go back that far? I'm like, you're asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was the kind of, like, he, he didn't think of it that way at all. And, and the, the kind of willingness to share what he knew with things like that, and his willingness to, to be open in discussion, like asking me about that castle being so far back in the picture, was part of the friendship and the kinship that I could see in this man, and the kindness that he put forward every time I crossed his path. And I will always be thankful that I had that with him. Um, and there was one thing I wanted to mention that if it, if it hasn't come up before or hasn't been thought about is that I do honestly believe that he, w he was one of the founding fathers of what we have here. And I don't think it would be unreasonable that if one of the awards at the art show given here be named in his honor, I, I think that would be a fitting thing. I don't think it's blowing it out of proportion. 
I think he was important enough, and, and it should be something that should be considered. But um, that's, that's about everything I have to say, and I'll, I'll miss him greatly. Thank you.